This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. As I mentioned before, there are certain kinds of runtime errors that can occur that aren't caught by the compiler. The compiler might issue a warning but still build and run the app. In those cases, it's time to use the static analyzer. Now, there are many times I'm sure that you're going to find yourself in the position where your app is ready. At least you think it's ready. It seems to run okay. It does everything it's supposed to do. But you need to remember the immortal words of Yogi Berra, the famous baseball player and pundit, and one of the greatest philosophers of all time. I'm sure Yogi was talking about application development when he said, it ain't over till it's over. So even if you've successfully compiled and launched your app and it seems to run correctly, there's still work you need to do. Xcode offers the build and analyze feature, which is really up here in the run menu. You can see it here, it's called analyze. Or if you chose product, you can choose analyze here. This is the static analyzer. It analyzes your code for memory leaks. The results show up like warnings and errors with explanations of where and what the issues are. You can also see the flow of control of the potential problem. To show you how this works, I deliberately created a memory leak here in My World App Delegate. First, by adding a statement here in the interface declaration as a clumsy attempt at adding an extra view. So I created an extra view object, and then down here I added this property declaration. Again, a clumsy attempt to add a second view. Then in My World App Delegate implementation file, right down here where the warning symbol occurs, I added this statement. Again, trying to create a new view with X controller. The problem here is trying to allocate a new object without doing anything with it is sure to cause a memory leak warning. So in order to find out, we run the static analyzer. The way to do that, like I said, you could choose product analyze or you could just use it in the run button here. You can go analyze. And although the build is successful, as it said, there's a couple of new data tips here appearing. We get a little blue icon that says potential leak of an object allocated on line 39, which is up here, 39. In fact, it says potential leak of an object allocated on 39 and stored into X controller. So what happens if we click on this little blue icon? It shows us a trace of what happened. First, you get a following warning. You get this warning here. Method returns an objective C object with a plus one retain count right here. And then object allocated on line 39 and stored into X controller is not referenced later in this execution path and has a retain count of plus one, which means the object has leaked. Notice that the results refer to actual line numbers in the code. That's why it's a good idea to turn on line numbers, which is the default in the text editor. But you can also, in case it was turned off, you can go into preferences, find text editing, and here show line numbers. Very important, excellent preference to keep on for this reason. I can close preferences here and go back to our view of our memory leak. So as you know by now, memory management is a big deal on the iPhone and the iPad. And before you attempt to get your app into the App Store or even run it on anyone's iPhone or iPad, you need to make sure it's behaving properly. By that, I mean not only delivering the promised functionality, but also avoiding the unintentional misuse of iPhone or iPad resources. These devices, as cool as they are, are nevertheless somewhat resource constrained when it comes to memory usage and battery life. Such restraints can have a direct effect on what you can and can't do in your app. Now, although the static analyzer can help you detect memory leaks, there's another application supplied with Xcode, which I can't get into here, called Instruments, which also lets you know how your app uses iPhone or iPad resources. And that includes CPU, network, and other resources, as well as memory. And I urge you to check it out if you're serious about app development for the iPhone and the iPad.